The first talk is a, is a very specific talk, it's about the uh, adult granulosa cell tumour. It's a very rare disease, um, less than 2% of the ovarian cancer, with a um, high topic in terms of management and in terms of diagnosis. We know now that the initial diagnosis, the histological initial diagnosis, is something very important because the management of the patient is completely different if we speak about frequent tumour versus this uh, uh, a subgroup, and we need to have molecular analysis. I mentioned the FOXL2 mutation and how it is important to implement the molecular analysis uh, all over the world. I also would like to focus on the fact that this uh, um, disease is very uh, well um, managed by the surgeon, but after the surgery, it's uh, today uh, 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 a big problem for the patient because we don't have a real uh, uh, nice uh, drug for this patient and we need to organize at the international level a real collaboration to develop translational research but also um, clinical trial dedicated to, to this to disease. And I also mentioned that we will report at the ESMO this year the first randomized trial dedicated to uh, sex core tumor where we will explore the combination of BEV plus weekly paclitaxel versus weekly paclitaxel. And it will be uh, an important topic because it's the first randomized trial in such rare disease. 60 patients were included in the Bayesian model, so we don't need to include more patients because we consider that the PFS rate at six months will be the, the good endpoint to explore the combination versus the sequential treatment between weekly paclitaxel and BEV. And we know now that weekly paclitaxel is probably a, a very nice drug for this patient. The problem is that this, uh, this disease is uh, um, frequently a local disease and in this case we don't need to have a radical surgery, it's a young patient. We need to con concern about the fertility sparing surgery and so if we don't have the right diagnosis but just uh, an ovarian cancer, patient will receive radical surgery and adjuvant chemotherapy and today for stage one, for example, 1A, we don't need a radical surgery and we don't need adjuvant treatment. The concluding point that we need to work on this topic because it's a hard disease and nobody would like to, to work on this topic until now because it is a niche and the pharma industry are not really interested by such disease and we, we need to consider that there is patient who are alone with such problems. Tomorrow I will speak on the, uh, what is the rationale of the combination of POP inhibitor and antiangiogenic agent in gynae cancer, but more specifically in ovarian cancer, because there is a right and a strong rationale to combine these two drugs. The first is that because both of the drugs alone report very nice results, and so the combination could be really interesting. We have now several uh, clinical and preclinical data to consider that the synergy is really interesting. And uh, we are waiting for big phase three, uh, including POP inhibitor plus bevacizumab to uh, be uh, available next year. It's a Paula one trial in first line. And I hope again this randomized trial will uh, be positive. And if the randomized trial will be positive, this will change the, the management and the routine practice for the patient with ovarian high-grade serous carcinoma. Today we have more and more uh, development in immune treatment and so we have to be careful that antiangiogenic agent is an important drug in ovarian cancer and we have to be careful not to uh, forget this, this pathway in, in the management of ovarian cancer and I will be not surprised if in the, uh, in the near future the combination of IO plus antiangiogenic and POP inhibitor will be uh, the backbone of the management of this patient. Thank <laughs> you.